a bunch of the movie theaters that are showing the movie. This is anecdotal, but like I've heard from people, that they go to the movie theater and it's. Empty. If I wanted to watch it yeah. now, where would I watch this? Uh, it's in theaters. Except, hold on, there's a twist. Yeah, there's a twist. Some people and chat, give me the link. Give me the Twitter link for this. We got to show Adam this. Some people are claiming that there is a little bit of fuckery going on. Oh, yeah? At AMC Theaters. That's oh. right. So when you go to the movie theater to watch this beautiful film, okay, some of these places, well, the AMC Theaters decided maybe they don't want you to watch it. Trying to stop the movie. AMC customer says theater discouraged her from seeing Sound of Freedom by saying AC was out. <laughs> She's popping off on TikTok. Right, let's watch. Let's take a look at this. So, don't know if any one of you have already been. 689,000 likes, by the way. Wow. From myself as well. Oh. <laughs> See the Sound of Freedom, but. Hey, give it a book. And I just walked out. Hi. And we are curious what your experiences were in the movie theater because we pre-ordered our tickets, paid for them, they were claimed, got the link sent, and this is an AMC theater in Pineville, North Carolina. Some point today, the tickets got refunded to my friend and we couldn't figure out why. So we come anyways to the theater after dinner and they're like, oh, well, we refunded all the tickets because there's no air conditioning in our theaters. Okay, whatever. We don't care. Very this is a, suspicious. This is a plot. This, this is, is a plot. Yeah. What, why, why, what happened to my right to be sweaty in a movie theater? Yeah, to be exactly. in a stinky Are you still theater, a it? BO theater. Yeah, you can, you can still She's watch still, it. But they were still showing it. So this brave soul withstood <laughs> conditions that are quite similar to every European country where there's no air conditioning for some fucking weird reason <laughs> and decided to watch the movie. So we get to thinking, why did they not send out a notice in the email saying, hey, we refunded your tickets because there's no air conditioning? Well, they just um, are and company. we just are curious why they why why didn't they let us know? There was no one in that theater. There was us four and four other people, eight people in the theater on a Friday night. There was air conditioning in the lobby. There was air conditioning in the hallways. There was air conditioning in the bathrooms. It was broken. Not the theaters. They don't broken. have the bartender or anything in the theater. No bartender in the theater? What? What is that? What, what is the what is hell that? is going on? What does that mean? No. I want my margaritas. Maybe it's one of those theaters where they serve you alcoholic beverages. Um, Man. Yeah. This is this is plain. I didn't realize this is in such wide release this morning. I smell something oh, stinky. It, oh, you didn't realize it was the wide release? I it's did not. literally currently beating indiana jones in the box office wow wow see this is why okay you know what we need corporate consolidation fuck antitrust because what we need is for disney to buy amc so that all they show is marvel movies and kill the independent theater the independent uh uh, theater industry because uh, things like this should not be should not be allowed we you know we we want corporate lockdown control so we don't get QAnon movies in the theater uh, so there's more. Okay. So my fiance and I just watched the movie Sound of Freedom that exposes Ooh. sex traffickers. And do you want to tell them what happened in the movie theater? All right, AMC. I don't know what's going on here, but first off, the AC was out. Like when we went to watch. If this lady wasn't Midwest hot. These clips wouldn't hit half as hard. Okay, but that's, that's it helped. The movie, and I'd seen someone else post something too that also saw it at an AMC, and their AC was out. And like as soon as we walked into the theater, it was hot as heck. I the literally AC brought a out. sweatshirt, and I was like sweating. And then we realized, like, it took us a while to actually realize it, but they didn't turn the lights off. They literally had the lights. They kept the lights on the entire. I love how stupid they are. He's like, I had a sweatshirt on and it was hot. And the other guy's like, I was, they, we didn't even realize the lights were on. I mean, have these people been to an AMC? It's a shitty chain. It always fucking sucks. And there was popcorn on the floor and the soda machine didn't work. And the girl was rude. Yeah. It's a fucking AMC. Yeah. It's awful there. 
<laughs> it's it's really bad. You went to the shitty mall by your house and had a bad time because yeah. America sucks. Like yeah. we are, we we don't have nice movie theaters anymore because AMC uh, bought them all and yeah. turned them all. Into, it's like going to, and then they berate like the dude working for le- <laughs> like minimum wage, like the the fucking fourteen year old kids. With acne all over his face, like you're a part of this global conspiracy to stop me from watching this pedophile movie. Oh my god! Her movie. Who does that? <laughs> like, they don't want you to see this movie. They were trying to make it like not enjoyable. No. Like, they were trying. First of all, it's a movie about sex trafficking. Yeah. I don't know why you're like this is the most enjoyable movie of all time. Secondly. There have been significantly better movies about child trafficking, yeah. like Taken. Yeah. Nobody thought that it was like some grand conspiracy to stop you from watching this movie. And last but not least, the reason why the movie is actually beating all these other movies in the box office is because they had a scheme. Oh. Yeah, they had a pay it forward campaign. Oh. So they, the movie was made in 2018. Nobody wanted to fucking release it. Nobody wow. wanted to finish it. So someone picked it up. And they realized, oh, we could sell this with like, you know, QAnon Association. Yeah. So that's yeah. basically what they did. Jim Caviezel, who's already like kind of a QAnon freak or actually full blown a QAnon freak, um, who, who is uh, the, the lead in the movie, uh, basically promotes it by saying like, you got to You got to expose the dark side of the yeah. sex traffickers like by yeah. watching this movie. It's like. It's the perfect kind of activism. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm eating a jalapeno popper, and that's activism. <laughs> it's perfect. I'm watching a fucking movie. And so they, and what they're encouraging people to like buy other people tickets. Like yes. It and it has already raised like $4 million. So, like, a, a bunch of the, a bunch of the movie theaters that, are showing the movie, at least this is anecdotal, but like I've heard from people that they go to the movie theater and it's empty. Yeah. But like the, but all the tickets are sold out technically. Sold. I mean, I, I, you know, there's a tendency. I think we have some is watching these people, watching these people getting kind of mad about like, Oh, there's a shitty movie. And it's like QAnon. Why is in the theater? And it's making money. And I'm like, these people are just like, they're just marks. They're just getting sold. Yeah, here it is. Like, this is it, the, they're it, like, you know, somebody figured out how to, how to get them to, uh, you know how to separate them from their money by telling them bullshit that they want to hear. Like, great, that's how the entertainment industry works. Uh, but it's it's you know the fact that these people think that this is somehow political action is so pathetic. They think watching this movie is unironically doing something that yeah. like they, the liberal pedophile elite, don't want you to do. Yeah. They also think that this is like actually a, a, a form of activism, yeah. which is great. It's like, I mean, it, it, this is in many respects no different than the person that like the anarchist on Twitter, the anarchist teenager on Twitter being like, oh, I tweeted about a thing. So like I'm actually doing something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, well, that's the only uh, the problem is those are the only avenues of political action that like capitalism gives us. Right. This is what you buy and what you say on our corporate media platform. And so we're trained to believe that that's what's important. And it isn't at all like political action is conversations you have in person with your coworkers about like forming a union or whatever yeah. or like knocking on someone's door to talk about a candidate. No, that takes that's- that requires effort and also requires <laughs> talking to other people and not like enjoying myself watching like a a fucking uh, movie about <laughs> sex traffickers getting owned. Um, like this person's mother bought multiple tickets in different theaters to show support. There's like a lot of people doing that. Um, but uh, here's another one. Let's see. So I've been seeing all over TikTok that people are going to watch the movie The Sound of Freedom, and these weird things are happening, like random emergency evacuations, um, the air conditioning not working and having to leave the theater. Or so dumb. And I thought, no, that's probably just something that's happening in other theaters and other places. So I took me and my daughters to go watch The Sound of Freedom today, and about an hour and 20 minutes into the movie, we get a random emergency evacuation. I feel like any kind of disruption now is seen as like, like, you're in Gary, Indiana. Yeah. Okay? The, the fucking George Soros does not care about this area. The AMC in your neighborhood. Okay? What's even the chain of logic? Like, if AMC, the company, didn't want you to watch the movie, they would not screen the movie. They would simply not have the movie. They would have a Marvel movie or whatever else. Um, also, if they've got your money... What is their motivation to, to kick you out of the movie theater uh, uh, an hour and 20 minutes into the movie? Uh, 
Uh, incredible. Yeah, movie theater empty, and it says sold out online and at the front desk for uh, Sound of Freedom. Unbelievable. I mean, it, the the thing is, the only product that these people have is like the the grievance, the feeling of being persecuted. And so if they're going to have any kind of media event, it has to have this. You know, it has to have, oh, they don't want you to see it. They tried to kick us out of the theater with the AC or whatever, or else it's not fun for them because that's this is the part that they enjoy is the feeling of persecution. That's all that they like. Yes. So... You know, they're, 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 these people are, these are little freaks having their, you know, getting their rocks off. My theater had a fire drill during Lady Bird. What were they hiding? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What are they hiding? What's going on? I wanted to go see Spider-Man multiverse or whatever into the Spider-Verse. And, you know, the guy puked next to me. That's yeah. probably a product of, you know, international global pedophile rings. <laughs> I mean, I've been so many weird things have happened to me in movie theaters. I was in a movie theater once where everyone else in the theater was convinced there was a gas leak during a screening of National Treasure and left. And me and my friends were too high to leave the theater. So we just stuck around. We were like, everyone else thinks there's a gas leak. I've been to screenings where the power went out. Like, it, like you live in America. The infrastructure is crumbling. Yeah. Get used to it. It happens every fucking day. Um, when I think about films that expose crimes against humanity, I think of like si the silence when you walk out of a screening and something like come and see everybody who comes out of this movie seems smug and gleeful over what they just saw. Creepy. Yeah. Can you imagine people walking out of Schindler's list or whatever, all hopped up and excited, smiling, babbling about how this is what the fourth Reich doesn't want you to see. My God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what's going on. That's, that's what it is. That's yeah. I bet there were no. I bet there were no uh, uh, fire alarms being pulled during uh, the, the seeings. I mean, it's, it's pathetic Schindler's also list. that this is the kind of movie that they have to watch, you know, and that this is what they have to do. Like, they're so, they're so marginal in American society that, that, you know, like, they used to at least have Clint Eastwood making movies for them. You know what I mean? Like, every, yeah. every five years he'd make some. And Clint Eastwood's a great movie star and a great director, and so the movie would actually be good, you know? Yeah. Um, or, like, American Sniper or whatever. But, like, this shit's just pathetic. There's plenty of movies that, that you they can enjoy still that have no, like... I mean, that's, like, very clearly with a right-wing slant. Damn yeah. near entirety of, like, uh, mainstream blockbusters are still uh, getting heavy support from the Department of Defense. You yeah. know what I mean? So, don't worry. It's still doing, like, pro-imperialist uh, war propaganda. I mean, propaganda. fucking Ghostbusters is an anti-environmentalism movie, you know? Really? <laughs> yeah. You watch Ghostbusters recently? The main villain in Ghostbusters is the EPA. The EPA comes in and says, you need to shut down your Ghostbusters unit because there's I didn't uh, too I didn't many watch, ghosts. I didn't yeah. watch... Uh, and it's because Dan Aykroyd was always a crypto right-winger, and he wrote the movie, and he was like, I, I hate environmental protection. I didn't watch it because women are in it. The original one. Oh, okay. The I didn't, original Ghost... The okay, first that one I didn't watch because it was old. <laughs> the new one I didn't watch because women, and then the other one I didn't watch because it's old. Um, someone was talking about how Nolan, like, restructured Batman to have, like, environmental activists as, like, the main villains or something. And uh, then how, uh, there was the surveillance state part of Batman as well that was, like, coming off the heels of 9-11. Isn't that what it was? Sure, I, 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 I believe that. I don't remember the environmental part. I remember, like, the, the surveillance state piece of it. But, yeah, like... I, I don't know. Nolan's Batman is such a fucking bummer. I can't. Oh, it was a Boots Riley who uh, talked about it. Occupy, not environmentalist. Boots is yeah. tight. Yeah. Uh, many AMC theaters all over the country are shutting off the AC in theaters that are playing the movie Sound of Freedom using the excuse that the AC isn't working to dissuade people from watching the movie. These people don't understand. Like, I guess they don't go to the movie theaters that often. But, like, yeah, this shit's commonplace, dog. It's just, like, because AMC's dog shit. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah, like they they're now realizing that, but instead, like there's it's piss like it, on the floor of the bathroom. They don't want you to watch the movie. It's like if Taylor Swift fans were also doing QAnon instead of like doing the QAnon version of knowing whatever numbers Taylor Swift mentioned in her album, however many times. Okay, <laughs> if they were not busy doing QAnon for Taylor Swift and real QAnon, they would be like, "Oh, I couldn't buy a ticket for my Taylor Swift concert. This must be the you know." International you sex know, traffickers it, stopping me from seeing Taylor Swift. What these movies got to do is like make a game for the QAnon people. Like, remember how the alternate reality games like they used to do for movies, where it was like there'd be like a URL and you'd go to it and there's a code oh, to God. solve. You, they got to do that shit for the QAnon people. That would go nuts if they if they had a little like they had they had a, a, a they would conspiracy. Kill they would kill people. 
<laughs> yeah, they would. My Wait, God. is this guy actually the CEO of AMC Theaters? Not even Adam, verified. Adam Aaron. Sadly, conspiracy theories are so prevalent in America. So much garbage information is spread. More than one million people have watched Sound of Freedom at AMC Theaters. More than any other theater chain on the planet, yet people falsely claim otherwise. It's so bizarre. Wow. He just... I, I love when, like, these guys who are ghouls for other reasons have to be reasonable against people who are even more ghoulish. Like, also, uh, fucking uh, Bob Iger... In the same interview where he was saying our demands were not reasonable, he also had to say our movies aren't endorsing pedophilia. That's ridiculous. Like, <sighs> and they're like, all right, I, I guess I, I agree with Bob Iger I don't, on the uh, one point. I don't know. There's some. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Leon, the professional. Uh, the was dicks it? in the background of the Little Mermaid. Wait, was it? Is in? The, oh, I was talking about the actual ones. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're, I was talking about the actual ones where there's like a very clearly under. Well, that's French technically, so it, it's different. You don't know Leon the Professional? Leon the Professional. I don't think. Wait, wait, the it's name is an familiar. Incredible movie. Oh, wait. The, wait. Uh, Luc Besson, uh, oh, Jean Reno, wait, and Natalie it, Portman. Is it? Is it based on? Lupin the Third is it one of the no like that? no it's not oh oh I know what you're talking about no. yes it's a Luc Besson movie yes it's yes, yes. one of by I've the way I've seen it it's, I've it, not seen it, it is an incredible movie for the yeah. record it is an incredible movie even though yes Natalie Portman is uh, is like very clearly underage a baby and there is like it's like a bit of a love story yes there. and the, oh I was reading about this because I was going down a Luc Besson rabbit hole and there's some like gnarly shit on this Wikipedia page right yeah he's a gnarly guy yeah 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 no he's a piece of shit. The sound your dog often makes? She's dreaming and snoring. It's okay. Uh, Leon, directed by Luc Besson, written by Luc Besson, starring Jean Reno, Gary Oldman, Natalie Portman. It's a fucking awesome movie. I highly recommend it. Okay. I, just, um, I tried to, I watched The Fifth Element again uh, like a year or two ago, and I told my girlfriend, I was like, this movie's great. And then we watched it, and I was like, I, I don't know if I stand by it anymore. Wait, really? Yeah, it was like. No, when I, it was like things so, I liked, it was so formative for me when I was watching there it are as things a child. I like, there are things I liked about it for sure. Um, but I think overall it didn't quite hold up for me as much as I expected. Um, it's like the, the beginning is like, it's got a lot of really ponderous lore in it. Um, is something I, I had forgotten. I about. love that movie. I am going to rewatch it now. Do it. I want to see if it's good or not. Um, an ode to pedophilia. No, thanks. Luke Besson operates camera himself, and when they call cut, he just drops it. As a camera assistant, if you don't catch it, it's your fault. This is not normal, by the way. Does that all the time? I like that. He, I like that in parentheses he said, this is not normal, by the way. He just, he just drops it. That sounds really dangerous. Leon is an Italian hitman in the Little Italy neighborhood of New York City working uh, for a mafioso named Old Tony. One day, Leon meets Mathilda Lando, a, lo a lonely 12-year-old who lives with a dysfunctional family in an apartment down the hall from Leon and has stopped attending class at her school for troubled girls. Uh, he has an abusive father who attracts the ire of corrupt DA agents who've been paying him to stash cocaine in his apartment. Um, it's a good movie. Uh, I, that's all I'm going to say. I'll check it out. I, yeah. I mean, it, it does look like something I would enjoy. Uh, it was inspired by his relationship with a 16-year-old when he was in his 30s. Uh, mm -hmm. I think his first wife, you mean, uh, who also recently worked with Johnny Depp, uh, who also is a very problematic uh, French uh, movie director now. Uh, that oh, is, is he? Yeah, he married that 16-year-old, who he then cheated on with Uma Thurman when she was, I think, like 17, if I'm not mistaken, during the shooting, or maybe she wasn't 17. There's a lot of, there's a lot of movies like yeah. this, where you're like, oh, I love that movie, and then you go read about it on Wikipedia, and it's like, oh, the director like, fucked a 16-year-old on the set of the movie. Uh, yeah, fuck. well, Luc Besson. <laughs> yeah, it's Luc, it's Luc Besson. Yeah. Um, oh, guy. no, not Uma, sorry. Mi uh, Mia Jovovich, you're right. I'm sorry. That's, um, that's a bad one to confuse those two. Mia Jovovich. Yeah, jo Jovovich. Everyone's, everyone's. How do you know all of this? I watched a lot of French cinema when I was growing up because that's like in Turkey. Uh, American movies would come. American movies would come uh, to Turkey like a year later, so French movies would come immediately and they would release immediately. So, um, anyway, uh, 
but that's probably why. I watch a lot of Luke Besson movies. They were bangers. Yamakasi is really good. Taxi is really good. The Taxi series. I have only seen the fifth element. Um, that one's great, too. <laughs> I'm from Colombia and had no idea about the amount of sex trafficking here. <laughs> yeah, brother, it's not for you. You're Colombian. <laughs> it's for the white people. That's what they're doing it for. The little kids in that movie trailer reminded me of, like, um... Like when the 700 Club, like the Christian TV show is like, we're saving the little kids in South America. Like it's the real, you know, uh, uh, white Christian savior. We're going to bring them Christ kind of energy. Um, uh, really uh, shitty. It's me off. Scarlett Johansson was 17 and lost the translation. Wait, what? Fucking no shot. What? I don't. Think that's I don't think that's true. Oh, originally worried that the seventeen-year-old Johansson might be too young to play a character in her twenties. What the director concluded she appeared older and convincingly played the part. I mean, she was great in it, but also, what? Yeah, I you're right. You forget because this is just a couple years after. This was after Ghost World, right? In which he's clearly a teen. Um, oh, my God. I, I, the director, very weird choice by, I guess, wait, is it, this is not, was it Francis Ford Coppola? No. Or was it one of the, oh, no, it was Sophia. Sophia Coppola, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Daughter. Directed Godfather 3, I think, right? Didn't she, like, have a hand in it? No, 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 no. no. She, she acted in it. She acted in it. Sorry, she was way too young to direct it. That's insane. She acted in it. She didn't direct it. I was so stupid. Yeah, of course she's a Nepo baby. The entire Coppola family is Nepo babies, yeah. including Nicolas Cage, who is also related. And uh, Nicolas Cage is related to them. How the fuck do you not know this? You're I, in Hollywood. I'm not a big movie. I'm not a big movie trivia. Nick guy. Cage and also uh, what is it? Aaron Schwartzman or whatever the other guy, Jason Schwartzman, also from, related to the Coppolas. Yes, with the with the yes. eyebrows and the thing. Yes, incredible. I, I'm not. I'm not a big uh, gossip. I know who's related to who or who's dating. My girlfriend's always mad at me because I never know who's dating, uh, yeah. and she knows ev everybody's relationships. Um, I do remember how. I mean, just the specter of Bill Murray in this in this movie. It, it, in retrospect, it's very creepy. The the arrangement here, you know. Yeah, especially because um, like, holy shit, Bill Murray is like a million years old. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's. Such a weird fucking guy. I remember when there were all those stories about him going, Bill Murray, like, he was in the bar, and then he started making drinks for everybody. And, oh, Bill Murray's so cool. And then, like... Wait, is he a bad guy? He's, uh... Well, he's, he's a good guy. Uh, uh, first of all, those stories, I eventually realized, oh, he's just, like, a serious alcoholic. <laughs> um, where, yeah. where he would, like, go to people's parties and drink all their booze. Oh, yeah, that's not cool guy behavior. That's... That's like fucking freak behavior. Um, but yeah, I think there's there's some there's definitely some sexual harassment stuff on that page somewhere. Um, no, last couple of years. what? Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, I forget exactly what the context was. Oh yeah, there it is. Feuds and allegations and misconduct. Um, you have a reputation of being difficult to work with, but I only got that reputation for people I didn't like. This is the like early stuff. I would go to the bottom of this section. Uh, yeah. Harassed and yelled Gina at her. Gina Davis. Yeah. Harassed and yelled at her. He had pressured, he had pressured her. her to let him use a massage machine on her back. He, she also recalled a dual interview on Arsenio Hall. Yeah. Seth Green alleged. He tried to pull down the spaghetti strap of her dress. Seth Green, when he was nine years old, Mary picked him up off a chair by his ankles and dangled him over a garbage can. <laughs> Above oh, next paragraph of uh, was suspended after Murray was accused of unspecified. This is this is what I remember. Yes, production of being mortal was suspended after Murray was accused of unspecified, inappropriate behavior. He had straddled the female production assistant and kissed and rubbed her on the mouth. Yep, yep. While the pair were wearing flu masks as a part of COVID nineteen protocols, the incident caused her to file an official complaint. What the fuck? Yep. Claiming what occurred was jestful, while the much younger woman, she said, interpreted his actions as entirely sexual and was horrified. Yep. The woman filed a complaint, yep. received a settlement. Murray paid her a hundred grand. Yep. This was Aziz Ansari's movie. He was supposed to direct this, and the whole movie was canceled because of this happening. And then recently, Aziz Ansari has been directing another movie. Uh, that movie has completely halted production because of our strike. So Aziz uh, has had a bad run of luck. 
on his uh, adventure into directing. Um, yeah. God it, This damn. is based on a nonfiction book about death, by the way. A really good book called Being Mortal that I read a couple of years ago by Atul Gawande. Uh, it's like insane that they made a... Uh, damn, ma- I they thought made a Bill Murray was it, tight. Holy shit. I nah, didn't man, know he's, about this shit. He's, uh, he, he's... I mean, I'm sure he has good qualities. <laughs> but he's, he's not really a chill dude, yeah, unfortunately. He's also 72. Yeah, I mean, so, this is like th- like weird, gross. This is like weird, gross old man shit. I, in in a weird way, dude. This is this sounds fucked up, but what I was about to say is like, um, my expectation from Hollywood actors is so low that like I'm like, oh, thank God he didn't like literally Harvey Weinstein someone. You know yeah, what yeah, I mean? yeah. No, no, no. I mean, that's very the, the story with the PA. It's still not I'll okay say, yeah. to me. That's completely against the pale, and the main reason is. That's at fucking work. You know yeah, what I mean? What like, the fuck are you you're doing? on a set. That's at fucking work. You treat everyone with respect at, at work. That's like, no one should ever work with the guy again, in my opinion. Like, I would never work with him, and I, I, I would hope others would feel the same. That's not blackballing. That's just like, yeah. you don't no, work with a guy who just, does that to people who work with him. But, like, my take on it isn't, uh, my take on it isn't because, like, oh, that's totally acceptable behavior. I'm just saying that, like, Usually, the bar that I assume yes. is happening is like Kevin Spacey level. Yes, 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 yes. You know what I mean? Yeah, and you were worried it was that bad. No, it's yeah. not. It's not that. Look, we can we can say. Here's all I think we have to do. We you, you learn the fact, you let it affect your opinion of the person. You don't say, "Oh, that can't be true." You you take it in, and you're like, "I have my whole history of Bill Murray, and I have this one thing." You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's all I. Adam ruins. Adam does ruin everything. <laughs> Holy fuck. <laughs> You can still watch Ghostbusters, you Wait, know? there's more Sound of Freedom shit? I find it really interesting how many celebrities ran their mouths for Black Lives Matter. And when everybody had the massive movement of posting the black photo to their Instagram pages back in 2020 after the riots, awesome. how many celebrities have no problem sharing their political affiliations? And yet not a single She's one calling of them me has out. mentioned child trafficking. Why has Adam not ruined sex trafficking of minors? He's ruining everything but sex trafficking of children. How about that, Adam? Oh, fuck. I mean, sex trafficking of children is still seen as a morally gray territory for some, okay? You need to ruin it. It's like, it's insane. Like, what is the, the other side of this argument is that, like, People are morally ambiguous about child sex trafficking, and therefore yeah. someone needs to finally say it's bad. <laughs> and also, it's a movie, okay? This is not like it, what is happening currently in the real world. It, it is happening currently in the real world, but this is yeah. a movie. It's a fictionalized, exaggerated story. And what's currently... like. It's like watching Taken and being like, wow, it's so crazy. Nobody's talking about sex trafficking of children after this movie. You're not doing political activism for watching a fucking movie. One of the most annoying things is when people on the internet say about anything, why aren't you talking about the thing I want to talk about? I had the most annoying, like, the worst people on Twitter are, obviously all I post is union shit now, and people will come at me, and say, where were you? Yeah, how about the uh, union between children and child sex traffickers? Yeah, bet you don't talk about that union, Adam. That's funnier than what I was going to say. No, uh, oh, no, 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 no. People come at me and they say, where were you when the rail workers were on strike? Why oh, weren't they you were doing about that, that to me earlier. Yeah, and I'm like, and, and so one of these guys, I got into it with him. I was like, here's my fucking tweets about the rail worker strike. Here they are. And then he said, okay, well, you're an exception, but I don't see other writers doing it. It's like, what do you, you'll never be happy, right? Yeah. A lot of fucking writers tweeted about that. I spot, a lot of us yeah. show up at the picket lines when hotel housekeepers are on strike here. We all do this shit, uh, but you you didn't see something in your timeline, and you're going to go accuse other people of not Yeah, no, I, I specifically hate the rail workers strike. I, I hate those guys. I'm like, you know, the guys that are carrying toxic chemicals that are incredibly important for our, you know, water supply. I want to make sure those guys don't have sick leave. <laughs> okay. I'm always saying that. I, I'm going to vote for Joe Brandon extra hard this time around for busting that shit. Yeah. It's like I covered labor union activity every fucking day and motherfuckers still have the audacity to come in here and be like, Pfft. What about the Teamster strike that's going on? It's like, bro, it just means you weren't here. Like yeah. that, you didn't care about it yeah. until you could use it as a talking point. Also, 
Like, I'm in my own labor struggle. It's my union. Of course it takes up more of my time than other people's unions because the fact is there is a very limited amount that anyone can do to help someone else's union struggle because it is between those workers and their employer. Yeah. Like, in our case, by the way, I'll plug, you can donate to the Entertainment Community Fund if you want to support our strike at entertainmentcommunityfund.org um, and you select film and TV workers and that money goes to support people who are affected by the strike. You can donate to that. That's pretty much all you can fucking do. You can retweet me every once in a while. That's it. Uh, people ask, should I cancel my Netflix? We, we're not asking anyone to do that because boycotts are weak sauce shit. They don't work. Um, strikes are much more effective. And so we, we focus on a strike strategy, not a boycott strategy. If you feel like canceling your Netflix, Netflix go ahead and, and you know be my guest. But yeah. it's not something we're asking people to do. So um, like the rail workers, yeah, I can do a tweet. But also whether or not I do a tweet about the rail workers is not material support. It's just a fucking tweet. And when you're going around policing other people's tweets, it is uh, meaningless. Uh, meaningless, and I, I, I hope people stop oh, doing I it. Got, I know they never will. So I we got, we got deadline it. to delete the tweet about Matt Damon. Wait, what? Yeah, there was a tweet about Matt Damon. Deadline tweeted here. You can't, you can see it on my phone still. Okay, but um, they, they, they basically uh cut half of his tweet on wow. purpose. Matt Damon at the Oppenheimer premiere says that the Hollywood labor strikes will be brutal for actors and his own production company, which has shut down one of his company's films. That's the first part yeah. of what he said. And then he followed through by saying, I support the uh, leadership unconditionally and they're right. This is the difference between having health care and not for like many working actors. Yes. And, uh, and he's going to hold strong with the leadership yep. on this. Yep. They didn't put that in. I mean, it's in the video. But they didn't put it on the tweet. Yeah. It, weirdly enough. So. Incredible. Yeah. So I, I quote tweeted it saying like they fucking suck and then they deleted it. I mean the celebrity shit in the actor strike is like a real other dimension. Because like Fran Drescher, the president of SAG-AFTRA, got shit for like going and working for Dolce & Gabbana like during the negotiations, right? When she had a pre-existing gig. Now I also have pre-existing gigs during our strike. I'm, doing, I'm on tour doing stand-up. If you want to come see me in Buffalo, Baltimore, uh, uh, St. Louis, or Providence, Rhode Island... Go to adamconover.net for tickets. You can come see me do stand-up. I can do that during the strike, right? Fran Drescher, while in a negotiation, she has a pre-existing commitment too. The, the, the union leadership roles are unpaid, right? I don't really have a problem with her going and like doing a gig if she's still doing a good job as a union president. But she got so much hate because people love to hate on celebrities. People want to find the excuse to talk shit about her. Um, and that's uh, that's the dynamic. So, so you know, Deadline l naturally loves to frame it in such a way that uh, they're going to make Damon look bad, even when he's being supportive. So thank you. That's an act of solidarity to get them to take the tweet down. I mean, it doesn't matter. It's no, still, it doesn't matter at all. Because, like, the publication overall you, is still going Did you to talk about the thing in Deadline where they said they were trying to make us all homeless? Did you read that article? Yeah, I did. Okay, good. Because um, that shit was wild and was such a miscalculation <laughs> by the studios. It, like, caused a, a surge of donations to the Entertainment Community Fund because the public was so pissed off about this. Yeah. Um, the um, previous version of this tweet was deleted for lacking Damon's full statement in the copy. We regret the inaccuracy and apologize to Mr. Damon. Someone's... PR agent went fucking nuts on them. That's yeah. wild to see in deadline. Yeah, because they made him look like he was anti the the union action yeah. when he wasn't. Yeah, that's even though he is, you know, he is Mr. NFT. I mean, dead, deadline is the piece of, is the shittiest of all the trades. Um, I'm a, a Hollywood reporter is the one that I like the best because they employ two reporters named Katie Kilkenny and Gary Baum, who are very good uh, reporters who get labor. Like, they, I, I don't agree with everything they write, but they generally understand labor very well. Deadline is just like a fucking uh, slush pile, and they just they just love creating chaos. Um, and some good people work there, uh, and you know we got to deal with them. But like, if you read something about a labor action in Deadline, do not believe it. Uh, before you go, I'll screw these elite actors. 87% of current union members don't even make 26 k a year. And of that 13%, many are background actors, yeah. which are, which is just more consistent. Yeah. 87% of union members don't qualify for health insurance. Yeah. It's, it, I, it, I have it, friends who are like, you know, they, uh, some of them were child actors, for example, and, and, you know, they're very successful and now they have to like sometimes appear in production specifically so they can maintain their health insurance yeah i mean i i do that too like they uh you know there's a lot of gigs where i go 
like, hey, can uh, you know, can you make this SAG? Uh, I, I'd say that routinely, but the main reason I do is like, maybe I can make the health insurance minimum because my writer's good health insurance is about to run out. SAG after health health insurance not quite as good, but if I can like make twenty six k, then I can, uh, you know, I can I can uh, uh, have insurance for a little bit. Yeah. Which is why Adam is going to be on the next rendition of Sound of Freedom. Sound of Freedom 2. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess this must be a union movie um, uh, if it's being released theatrically. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, and so uh, that's that's one thing that I love is that, like, our union coverage is so good that even, like, the right-wing fucks need to deal with our unions um, in order to get anything made. I think even, like... I think we were talking about this uh, in union circles that, like, the Daily Wires movies are also union. Uh, <laughs> Wait, really? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Oh, no way. I think so. For I, a whole $800 that Gina Carano's uh, movie <laughs> made, they they still went with a union crew? That's look it awesome. up. Well, you, you know, like, IATSE, the crew union is a tough union. If you try to shoot something non-union, they just fucking flip you. They, they, they show up with signs, and they're like, you're flipped. You're flipped now. And then, you know, SAG is like, it's really hard to get actors who, um, uh, who are any good who are not SAG. Oh, there's uh, also the the um, yep the worker strike with uh, hotels. Unite here is back out. They are fucking badasses. Um, they're yeah. on our line all the time. We join them on their picket line. They represent like some of the lowest paid, you know, immigrant workers in Los Angeles, and they are so powerful. And they're doing a really cool strategy right now, where instead of doing they're doing citywide strikes, but they're doing them like. So they're like surprise strikes. Like they did a strike for a weekend and then they called it off. And now they're doing it again at, a, at some other hotels. And I believe their strategy is to like create chaos and uncertainty because, you know, their workers are like low wage. And so I think they're going to have trouble waiting out a long strike, but they're like, we can disrupt your business whenever we fucking want, like at the drop of a hat. Cause our people are so organized. And so that's their strategy to try to get increases for their members. It's really fucking cool. Um, they're, they're, they're an incredible union. Oh, um, Dune the Sisterhood is going to resume filming soon in Hungary throughout the SAG after strike. So they're just like... I uh, mean, they can fucking try. But, like, if Timothy Chalamet, right, yeah. is, is in that movie, he is going to get a call from the union that says you're going to be brought up on... You know, you're going to have to go before a committee and explain why you're violating the strike rules. And he's going to back down so fast. Um, and then they're not going to be able to shoot. Um, they're going to try... Uh, but, and maybe a couple things overseas will be able to get through, but like what you have yeah. when, when, when stuff like this is happening is the producers try to bargain. They go, Oh, we could, we could oh, do Oh, this little, is a, this yeah. is doing the sister is a TV show. I think. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's not Dune part two. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, if it's done entirely with Hungarian actors and crew, perhaps they can do that. Um, yeah, but Timothy Scabame? No, he's not. <laughs> um, well, they use that's a photo of Timothy Chalamet, right? I, it looks like it. To I me. think so. I don't know. I can't tell from this angle. I'm excited for Dune too. Um, gotta be, be tight. But uh, yeah, no, they're trying to avoid uh, SAG AFTRA by going to Hungary. You can avoid the top of the hour ad break, which comes in 20 minutes later because I forgot to run it at the top of the hour by subscribing for five dollars or free with Twitch Prime. Here's the three minute ad break now. Now no one's like listening to us. No, no, they, it, no, no. Most people are subscribed. No, and most most people, people are subscribed. Okay. Yeah, I have more subscribers than I have uh, live viewers right now. Wow. Like a lot more. And also okay. on top of that, uh, it doesn't serve an ad every time. I, I just have to run it. My contractual obligation. Blue Wizard Cult, thank you for the five gifted subs. Carter Shorn, thank you for the ten gifted subs. <sighs> Tim, don't do it. The gay community rep is already getting worse, and we're desperate and vicious. Wait, why? Oh, because of uh, Willy Wonka, his Willy Wonka performance? Wait, I, I'm, I'm lost. <laughs> I'm sorry that I'm not, like, up on the day-to-day -day culture of you and your Twitch chat full of freaks here, but um, yeah, yeah I, I, I love to learn. They were doing the same thing with HBO. This seems to be a clear message from Warner Bros. House of Dragon has a lot of SAG members. How can they do this? Uh, no, they don't. I mean, they're British actors. They're saying most of the cast are UK actors working under contracts governed by the local union equity and are not legally allowed to strike in. Yeah, so holiday. UK has really shitty. Rob the Bussy, thank you for the tank, uh, 20 gifted. Um, uh, UK has really shitty labor laws. Um, like we cannot picket in the UK. It's like uh, the picketing restrictions are really limited. Yeah, you have to like, what do you, what do you have to get it on a calendar ahead of time too? There's a lot it's of like stuff weird. like that. It's a really, it's limited in the US too, but it's a lot more limited in the UK. And, um, 
Yeah, I mean, if those actors are not SAG members at all, then, you know, they're not bound by the strike. But, uh, I mean, they're going to be shooting around the ones who are SAG members. And so, at the very least, it's going to be a problem for them. Well, they also don't have writers. They can't have yeah. the... the yeah. American writers that are part of the Correct. Writers Guild are not doing any rewrites, so it's yeah. going to be shit. And ideally, the showrunners of shows like this are just walking off of the shows, and then there's nobody running them. They have to have a non-writing producer, and like if they have somebody like try to make little line changes or edits, that person is violating the contract, and like it's a whole enforcement issue. And you can't enforce every single show, but if we're able to like end or disrupt 70 or 80 percent of the productions like it ha it makes a huge makes a huge huge difference yeah um the, the 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 you know the the ceos are really gonna like right now they're going okay oh, we'll be fine we'll be, we could we could shoot we could shoot house of the dragon and ask how they feel in a week you know once they see how much stuff is being shot shut down how much money they're losing um, how badly they're doing in the press. They're going to start freaking out very shortly. Adam's right. They've shot around SAG members for weeks running triple bank main units to get rid of them before the strike. Well, wow, you Glacier Rays, you got the inside You got the inside scoop. The, in the UK, that is. Yeah, they've shot around SAG members for weeks running triple banked main units to get rid of them before the strike. So they're trying to shoot out all the SAG members. But it doesn't... You, I mean, maybe they were able to do it. But, there's yeah. always going to be reshoots. There's always right? going to be reshoots. Um, you work in film and TV in the UK. There's always going to be reshoots, and there's yeah. always going to be like rewrites too. Yeah. Which both of which, if you don't have your show, is going to be shit. Yep. The people are going to need to come back in to do ADR, which is when they dub in the audio. Um, it's it like so. Look, every single one of these shows has a line producer, and the line producer's job is to make the show happen no matter what. And so those people are so driven, and whenever a strike is called, they start doing shit like this, where they start bargaining. About, okay, if we just shoot out the people, uh, maybe I can still because that's their fucking job. They're and and you know respect to them for doing a good job. Um, but uh, you know, like like that show Wonder Man that we you know shut down on uh, the Marvel show, they kept trying to shoot for like two weeks until they finally gave up. Um, because we were just shutting them down every single day and they were hemorrhaging money. And so there's a lot of bargaining that they do to with themselves to try to figure out how to, how to keep it going. But it, it doesn't work in the long run. It, it, you cannot make television and movies without uh, SAG-AFTRA and Writers Guild members. It doesn't work. That's why we're going to win. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. See, this is what's incredible about this form of media oh. because when I do shit and I sneeze, nobody sees it. We cut it out. But you, with you, yeah. it was the hardest adjustment for me with Twitch. I was like, oh, I should just eat on camera. I should sneeze. Yeah. I should just do my shit. Um, it's it's extra bad because, well, right now oh, it the, doesn't hurt as much. No, no, no. I'm good. This is how I know I'm good because this morning I sneezed. I was really terrified. I was like, oh, fuck. So I've been trying to not do that. And then it didn't hurt as bad. So we're good. Um, Yeah. Good. I'm glad. Getting I'm glad better. You're feeling better. I st I can't like work out still, but uh, okay. it's definitely getting better. Okay. How long would you estimate it takes before the studio's pockets start bleeding seriously, Adam? Not you, Hassan. You're dumb. <laughs> I think. Uh, well, well, first of all, they're already bleeding. They're already hemorrhaging money from the shows that were shut down. Um, they are already uh, not going to have shows for the fall lineup for the ones that still have broadcast networks like Fox and NBC and and CBS, Paramount, etc. Um, and, uh, you know, the, any disruption to these companies costs money. So, like I said, Fox, having to adjust everything, put up a strike-proof lineup, but now that strike-proof lineup can't shoot either. That's going to cost them a lot of money. Um, and so what we're doing is fucking up their pipeline. Uh, in the future, like, when they look ahead at the next two years, they're also, like, you know, they need their, their earnings those years as well, and they're not going to be having those shows or movies. So, and, so, again... And also, the media does play a role in this, in my opinion, because, look, the reality is, when you shut off production um, and you eliminate the runway... Uh, the real problem starts arising when the shareholders start Correct. catching up to uh, how bad their next quarter is going to look. Yeah. And then 
the market starts retaliating against these, these guys companies. are going to start hearing on earnings calls. Hey, so how are you going to deal with the SAG strike? And previously, when they got the question about the writers go strike, they say everything's fine. We have a lot of stuff in production. It's going to be wrapped up pretty soon. Don't worry about it. This is going to be a lot harder now that two unions are on strike. Um, they're going to say, oh, don't worry. We're still shooting this or that. And the shareholders are going to be like, fucking bullshit you are. No, you're not. You know, um, And their stock price is going to start to be affected. Those, those, uh, you know, The actual money people are going to start getting mad at them. Why are you playing such hardball with your own workforce? The celebrities who you are fucking selling to the public, why are you going to war with them? And that's going to cause them to come back to the table. Now, the, the interesting thing is they're going to, each company is going to feel that separately. And so the ones that are feeling the most pressure are going to start going like, why am I fucking letting Ted Sarandos like, you know, dictate my timeline? And they're going to call one of the other CEOs and be like, why don't we just go talk to the Writers Guild? And then they'll talk to two or three more and then maybe they'll start breaking apart. And that's when we win because then we impose terms on the ones that are more desperate. And then those terms we impose on the other ones that come later. Well, these three agreed to it. So now you have to too. And that's how we turn pattern bargaining uh, against them. And that's, uh, that's the way we're going to win i don't know when it's going to happen uh that that i leave up to our extremely talented staff we have a chief negotiator and and a bunch of other folks who like spend literally their entire careers learning how to help workers win in this situation and this to them is like the what they have been preparing 15 years to do and so they're they're just kicking fucking ass and they're some of the coolest people i have ever met um if you really want to be inspired meet someone who works for a union um they are some of the most incredible people on the planet here is Barbie. No, I very much in support of all the unions. It's a job like any other, and actors, like other workers, can join the union. My union is Actors' Equity, which is part of the Media Alliance, which covers performers and journalists and well, anyone working in media and entertainment. Sometimes issues come up with our pay slips. And I feel like this is literally... Uh, I think she shot this for Equity, I assume. Yeah, this looks like an industrial film made yeah. for Equity where she's like explaining what it is. Um, That's is crazy. It, is it uh, the U.S. Actors Equity? I'm unclear on that. Uh, no, this is she's Australian, so yeah. I assume maybe they have it both in the yeah. U.K. and Australia. Yeah. Bad dinkum. Most, mo almost every entertainment union not in the U.S. is a lot weaker than the U.S. unions. Uh, for I just found reasons. out the second she's Aussie. Are you fucking serious? Come on. Really? You didn't know she was Australian? I always assumed, at, you know, after seeing her Wolf of Wall Street, she was from Long Island. You know what I mean? The thing is, I just... Mom my is so tired of wearing panties. My assumption is that every actor that's, like, super hot is Australian until I'm proven otherwise. <laughs> like, it's a good assumption. Yeah. It's a good assumption. Every, oh, every British, yeah. super hot actor and actress is Australian. Yeah, yeah. They grow them big out there. I don't know how the fuck it works. I don't know how it, it happens to be that way, but it is that way. Aussie unions are much stronger than the U.S. First of all, he's talking about actors' unions. Yeah, actors' unions He's not talking about regular trade unions. Yeah. He's talking about actors' unions. Yeah. sag after is a fairly... Uh, fairly powerful union well and that's because you know uh, uh, the the strength of a union is often you know uh, aligns with the overall market power like labor power of their workforce and since sag after represents the most sought after actors and the most highly trained actors and the writers guild represents you know it, it was just where that, do you say that because like i upper, haven't upper been, echelon they haven't reached out to me it's odd <laughs> It, mean, it means the union has more has more structural power. It doesn't mean you can't organize your way around lack of structural power. Like like Unite Here is a union that represents again all these low paid uh, uh, hospitality workers, and they've managed to organize their way into having tremendous power. But there's a measure of structural power that comes from representing all these celebrities, and that that's the main thing that I meant. I'm not like talking shit about any other union. It's just because the United States has this extremely mature. Uh, valuable media industry, we end up having the stronger, strongest unions as well. And because we've fought to protect them for the last hundred years. Let's see what else Stuff, to say. Um, and overtime. Oh. There's just technical oh, things time. that for someone who's new to acting, oh, you don't time. know what what it's about or what you're actually entitled to. And and being a part of the union, oh, I can I then go to our union representative, who is Alan Fletcher at work, Dr. Carl, and um, just make sure that I'm not being ripped off. And it's good to know that there are things they should be abiding by and stuff we are entitled to to make sure we get correct pay or breaks or overtime. Just don't don't be afraid to ask and kind of not, well, sort of demand your rights because you do have them. And I know how it feels when you're new and you're starting a job and you're at the very bottom of the pecking order. I've been in the position where I've been too nervous to ask because I don't want to 
cause a fuss, but um, if I knew that I was actually entitled to those things, I, it would have been a lot easier to sort out at the time. It's really easy now that I'm a union member. I All I have to do is call up Actors Equity or send them an email. Even if it's just a trivial question, they're still there to answer and they have all the answers. And sometimes if you're younger, you feel like it's not your place to ask or, or bring up something, but you have rights like everyone else and you should stand up for them. I mean, th this is why she's standing with us now is because she had this experience when she was in the, uh, you know, her early stages of her career, like being in a union and seeing what it did for her, you know, and, and understanding like, Oh yeah, this is, this is what protects me. And, and is this the correct place to donate by the way. Uh, it is correct. Yep. Entertainment community fund. And you want to make sure you're donating on the page that says support film and television workers. There's a separate page for, um, performance, like live performance workers. Um, but this is the one. And, uh, yeah, this, this is, this is essentially a mutual aid fund. The fund that you do this is a hundred year old charity, but the, uh, the, the money that you donate to it will, uh, go directly to, uh, uh, folks who are affected. Like if people who have worked in the entertainment industry for, I believe a minimum of three years, they apply to this if they're on hard times and they'll give you a grant. I think the grants are $10,000 if you say I'm having trouble paying my rent or et cetera. Um, and we've raised the writers guild has raised like, I believe over $2 million for this fund at this point. Um, and 